Okay, although this is labeled oscillators of the Analog Solutions Leipzig S, uh, don't be frightened when we have to move into different sections because the integration of this synthesizer inspires us to move outside of the bounds of the oscillator section into the other sections in order to show what the oscillators do. So stick with me, don't be afraid. This synthesizer is ferocious. It's one of the most ferocious analog synthesizers I've ever worked with. It's, uh, it's giant, it's crazy, it's out of control, it's monstrous, it's fat, it's thunderous, it's, it's a monster. And I'm gonna show you how. Okay, let's start out with oscillator one. The oscillator section is set up, so we have oscillator one on this side and oscillator two on this side. Um, to get any sound at all, though, we have to immediately go to the mixer where I have turned up oscillator one to a sawtooth wave. I don't know if you're hearing this already, but this is... Uh, there's a big low end on this sawtooth wave. It is already fat before we've even gotten to the filter. And let's hear the square wave. Kind of a pulsy sounding square wave on oscillator one. Really awesome. Okay, let's move down to the glide. Now glide is just portamento and you can set the amount with this knob. With the breadth of this oscillator, uh, Portamento takes on a new sort of exciting sound to me. Maybe I'm crazy. But because it has that low end, it just, it's so authoritative. I love it. Okay, let's go down to the pulse width setting on VCO1. We'll switch it to a square wave, so we're actually dealing with a pulse width. Like I said, this is kind of a pulsy sounding uh, square wave. We can get more low end in it by turning this pulse width setting to the left. It's a great sound and we can make it more nasal by going to the right. Um, it's really great and you have everything in between Of course if you want to do pulse width modulation with this knob you can But if you didn't want to sit there turning that knob back and forth uh, Analog Solutions has also provided you with the opportunity to have electronic pulse width modulation uh, with this very cool knob right here. If you move to the left, the triangle wave from the LFO is controlling the pulse width. And you can hear that point where the sound stops. That's where we get to a duty cycle of zero. So that's where your square wave has become basically a line wave. Um, but not to worry, uh, to avoid that little notch, we can uh, turn the effect down a bit. Um, we can also adjust the width of the pulse with the original pulse width control and that will affect how pulse width modulation happens it's 
it's really a pleasing sound with the way that these waveforms sound. Um, if you turn to the right, you're more likely to run into a duty cycle of zero. Zero percent. But if you dial the effect back, you can allow the modulation to work with what you have. Which means even that really narrow nasal sound can get some pulse width modulation. So let's go on to oscillator two. I've turned on the square wave on oscillator two and already it's beefier. And it has a sawtooth wave as well. I'm going to turn it over. See, there's the zero. The zero point means that there's neither square wave nor sawtooth. Great sounding oscillators. And uh, we have the same glide function that we had over on oscillator one. You can set the amount. Also, here to the right of uh, the glide knob is a switch marked MIDI pitch. If you switch that off, you'll only get one drone note no matter what note you play. You can't see me, but I'm playing a lot of different notes while I'm doing this. And that becomes effective in a number of ways. First of all, as a drone, but also in some of the more crazy functionality we're going to get to later. Now, speaking of crazy functionality, let's move on to the sync functionality. Now, as you'll remember, uh, sync on synthesizers is when one oscillator's waveform is uh, forced to re restart its cycle whenever the waveform of a different oscillator restarts its cycle. So, let's switch this to VCO1, and now VCO1's uh, cycle dictates when VCO2's cycle restarts. The fun comes in when you start changing the pitch of os the oscillator that is synced to another oscillator. Now turning the detune knob is not going to give us a very exciting sound. So what we want to do is modulate the pitch of oscillator 2 from some external source, and I'm going to choose the modulation section. Over the modulation section, uh, we can choose VCO2, we can choose uh, the triangle wave that's coming out of the modulation section, the LFO, and we can add that to the pitch of oscillator 2, and by changing the pitch of oscillator 2, we're going to engage the sync effect. <laughs> Now, as you can see, this is not gentle on the synthesizer. Let's listen to the sauce. And that is a cool sound. We can also use the square wave. That's a unique effect, and it's going to get more unique when we start really getting to modulation. But a lot of the fun now comes from this. I have chosen Envelope Generator 2. Envelope Generator 2's envelope will now control how the sync effect, the pit, it's basically controlling the pitch of oscillator 2 over time, which changes the sync relationship between oscillator 2 and oscillator 1. Now, what's cool about this synthesizer, we're going to get a little bit into the envelopes here, uh, you have the ability to set which envelope controls the amp. So because I want to use envelope 2 to control sync, 
Um, I've set this so envelope one is controlling the amp. So let's have a listen. It's more of your traditional popular sync sound there. Of course, um, <laughs> this synthesizer has such a hardcore sound. So yeah, you can already tell that there's a lot of cool things you can do. Um, you can also, because this modulation section allows MIDI control uh, of the modulation, MIDI is a modulation source, you could do that. Unfortunately, I don't have anything connected up to it to do that. So um, there are a lot of sync options. 